Hey everybody, welcome back. I know it's been a while, too long, and uh, I apologize for that, but I've been working on some really cool projects, and today I get to share with you the completion of this one. And this is kind of my dream acoustic guitar, and one of the best sounding acoustics I've ever played. So I just got it back a couple days ago from my good friend Joel, who's a bit of a legendary guitar repairman. And he really helped me out with this one because um, I am just not qualified to work on acoustic guitars. And he had to go in and do some really extensive repair work to this one. So today I wanna share with you guys uh, exactly all of the work that he did to this guitar. And of course, I'll play it for you. And it should be cool because I'm gonna do a standard acoustic mic'd setup with my Neumann microphone here. And then also go direct into my interface because we did put a pickup in this guitar, more on that later. And I wanna see how that sounds and even blend the two sounds together because I know some people do that. So should be pretty interesting. Hopefully you guys will dig it. So let's get into it. Um, to start, these guitars came out in 1962. And this one here is about a 64, 65, and it's got some very oddball appointments to it, and you guys probably have already noticed some of them, but this guitar was weird to begin with because it's a 25 and a half inch scale. So you might notice it is a little bit longer than a standard acoustic, and the frets are a bit further apart, so it does take some getting used to to play it. It's a bit harder to play but it does make for a unique sound, which uh, that's something that I look for. Anyhow, the uh, major odd part to this guitar is that um, specifically around 64 or so, Gibson came out with an ABR-1 in the bridge here. And obviously this is totally unorthodox for an acoustic guitar. I think Gibson did get some complaints about it, and they ended up discontinuing it shortly thereafter. So there's really only about a year time period where you can get these doves with this ABR-1 bridge. And what's super cool is that there, um, there's some famous photos of Tom Petty actually playing a dove exactly like this one, the exact same configuration. And of course, being a big Tom Petty fan, uh, that's, that's pretty cool to me. So I don't know what he may have used that for recording wise or if, he even did, but he certainly played one. Anyhow, this guitar specifically has a natural top, which they could have come in a burst top as well, which I'm not really a fan of the burst. So I love the, the natural worn in top on this one. And you can see all the killer checking on the top and, and the play wear. Uh, it just feels worn in. That's what I love about these old vintage guitars. And I'm on the back here. It's maple back and sides with this beautiful cherry finish and it's, it's pretty stunning. It's got some flame in it too. But anyhow, the other unique options on this one, the white truss rod cover, which again was just for about that year, and then the waffle back tuners that some of the Gibsons had back in the day, which still work perfectly. So when I got the guitar, it, like I said, it was really in disrepair. And the first thing we had to do was humidify it because it was super dry. So I took the string tension off and I actually removed the pit guard myself and it did help. I probably left it alone for a good month or two. And then when, when Joel was ready, I ended up sending it to him for the major repair. So once he got in there, he could see that someone had basically lathered glue all inside on the bracing, probably because it was rattling around and, and making noise. And that's kind of what happens with these guitars. So he had to undo that and shore up the bracing to make sure this guitar was sturdy and safe to put string tension on it. Then there was a couple of cracks. You might remember two major cracks right here where the pit guard had shrunk and just pulled the wood in and split it really bad. And Joel was kind enough to put in a few pieces of spruce and fill those cracks and then shoot some lacquer over it and color match it. And it's really tough to see that repair. Uh, I think he, he really did an excellent job there. 
There was another crack up here, which he sealed. That way, not gonna have any more movement in those areas. Then he did help me out with um, some of the frets were kind of pulling up and, and now everything is good to go there. Then we decided to put a pickup in the guitar. If I want to play it live, I can do that. Uh, or maybe add another dimension to recording. We'll find out here in just a moment. But he recommended that I use a K&K Mini pickup, which I'll show you guys here. This is what it looks like. And, you know, I don't really know anything about acoustic pickups, but this one certainly looked kind of weird to me, but I took his advice and went with it. It's got three little transducers that you glue underneath the bridge. So it's totally reversible, non-invasive. And so these transducers are glued up underneath the bridge. And then of course you have a jack, which you have two options with a jack. And before you have a heart attack, this hole was already here when I bought the guitar. So we could have routed out this original strap button and done that whole thing. But I opted just to kill two birds with one stone and, and leave the jack right there. And again, I think it's kind of a unique feature on the guitar. Of course, we left the tunematic as it was. I know some people suggested I change it uh, to something more traditional. Some people think it robs the tone. Some people think it adds something to the tone. I don't think I could mess with something that sounded as good as this one does. And it really allows you to dial in the intonation quite perfectly. So this one has got the top two saddles replaced, but the bottom four are original uh, nylon saddles. And you'll see I added a little shim here to this low E saddle. It's probably a bit worn out, but uh, seems to be working now and I hate to change it. But the low E can kind of rattle from time to time, um, especially if you do like a drop D or something, which sounds so incredibly cool on this guitar. But uh, it can rattle. The other thing about this, just with the condition of the guitar and um, you know trying to get some longevity out of it still, uh, we did string it with a lighter gauge in hopes of, you know, not putting any more pressure than it than needs to be on this one. And then I found that standard tuning on this guitar, for one, it, it is a bit harder to play because of the scale of this one. Um, and maybe I'm biased, but E flat seemed to be perfect. And then if you do um, drop down a whole step, so like D standard per se, it sounds really, really cool. So uh, again, this shim kind of helps with that low tuning. Well, I think it's time to get to playing this one, and I would love to hear what you guys think of this guitar, your opinion on the work and the sound of it. So we'll start out with just the mic'd up sound, and then I'll put on the screen when we're doing the direct in and even blend them. Maybe it'll sound great, maybe it won't, we'll find out. But anyhow, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I would love to hear from you. All right, let's take a listen.
Let's plug it in now. Huh? We're plugged in, so let's see what happens. Uh, this will be just the plugged in sound. Cool. Let's do uh, the blended Neumann microphone as well. See what happens. Hey guys, I wanted to chime in here uh, one final time before I let you guys go and say thank you so much for being here and watching the video. And uh, sorry that I was gone for so long. I uh, just needed a bit of a break. And also to, to get a lot of these projects either finished or sold. I've got too many things that are in process and it, it kind of clouds your mind a little bit. So uh, I got some things moved that I needed to and then I'm getting some things fixed that I needed to as well. And I think that will be an upcoming video, maybe by the end of this week. Um, some of the new projects that I've got, that I've got going, and uh, some things that are, that are almost fixed and should be finalized and videos coming on them uh, soon as well. So like I said, I would love to hear your opinion on this guitar. How did you think it sounded? And what did you think of the repairs overall? Would you play it? And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. I'll see you. Peace.